Welcome to another episode of I'm Dying to Tell You. This is Dr. Mark Goulston, and uh, this is part of a series of podcasts in which I'm sharing with you things that the fact that I'm uh, nearing the end of my life has been teaching me. And I, I wish I learned them this fully years ago, and I'm sharing them with you. And you're off the hook if you don't listen, because I wouldn't have listened to me five years ago, but I'm sharing them with you anyway. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about is the idea of being reactive versus being proactive. Uh, I think most people would agree that when you're in a reactive mindset and you verbalize something reactively, the chance of you making the situation immediately better is close to zero. Now, that said, sometimes people vent, they react, they yell, and then what happens is they get things off their chest and they have makeup sex, you know, and it's really great. But the point is, they haven't necessarily resolved anything. They've just allowed things to build up until they reach the point where neither person or either person couldn't take it anymore, and they just launched into each other. But generally speaking, being reactive and coming from that is probably a young person's game. Uh, uh, even if I wasn't in the situation health-wise, I think as I get older, I'm wanting to stay away from reactive situations or ones that are going to provoke me to be reactive. On the other hand, if you're proactive, which few people are, uh, you can often prevent a lot of the things that happen in life. There's a saying, hindsight is 2020. And I would add to that, foresight is very rare. But this is your chance. And what I wanted to talk about with regard to uh, reactivity and proactivity is something about relationships. What I have noticed is that. Uh, if you get involved with someone who tends to be entitled, even if they have a lot of value to you, even if they are talented, even if there's a lot of chemistry between the two of you, I would steer clear of entitled people. Entitled people often feel entitled to things that they don't deserve. They haven't earned them. Uh, which is often why they don't feel entitled to them. I think it's perfectly normal and healthy if you know you that you deserve something, you deserve a raise, you deserve a promotion. I think that's okay to feel entitled to it. And also in personal relationships. And so if you've uh, worked hard to show respect and be loving towards another person, hmm, of course, they'd have to agree that you have been that way. You may think you've been that way, but that's not how you came off. But if you actually have been that way, you know, then maybe you're entitled to receive the same from the other person. But one of the things I would suggest is to identify people who feel deeply entitled. Uh, because what's going to happen is there's going to be conflicts because they feel entitled to things. What's also going to happen is, and I, this is something I want to share with you, I think entitled people believe they have a right to be disappointed in you, but they cause you to feel that you don't have a right to be disappointed in them. I'll say that again. Entitled people often feel they have a right to be disappointed in you, but they cause you to feel that you don't have the right to be disappointed in them. And that's where you can uh, avoid a lousy partnership in business, uh, a lousy marriage. And one of the ways to do that is if it looks like you're going to go down the road of a partnership, or a relationship that leads to marriage, an important thing to ask the other person is to, is to say, uh, in the event going forward, we're disappointed in each other about something. 
Uh, what's the best way to handle that without it turning into a uh, into an argument or a war? That's going to be very revealing of a person who feels really entitled, because built into them is their entitlement to feeling disappointed with you, but you're not allowed to be disappointed in them. In fact, they're the kind of people who not only express their disappointment in you, they get angry at you. If you were to express your disappointment in them, they're often the kind of people that say, well, why don't we just break up? Why don't we just end the partnership? Why don't we just get a divorce? Which can drive you crazy because you're not saying, I want to end the partnership. You're not saying, I want a divorce. You're just expressing some disappointment about something. So I would really advise you to see if you can uh, get this up and out before you go down the road with someone. And it's going to be very revealing of a person you shouldn't go down the road with. So I, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I would I would give it a B, B minus in terms of meandering. But as with the other episodes I've offered you, I hope you'll find that there's a pony there. So until the next episode of I'm Dying to Tell You, I don't think I'm dying soon. So I have a, a few more episodes under my belt. So take good care.